If you paint in watercolor, this is going to be a giant gift to you. Cindy Barron, what are you going to do today? Well, today I'm going to show you how it's taken me many, many years to figure this out, how to make your watercolors very rich. So watercolors are typically kind of watercolory, but you have completed a system that's going to, we're going to show today that is going to absolutely blow people away. Yes, I'm very unusual. There's no doubt. I'm very different from all the other watercolors, but like I said, it's taken me many years to get this far. All right. Well, let's get this show rolling. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Welcome to Art School Live. We're here every day at 12 noon Eastern. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. We love having you here. We have, uh, thankfully, thanks to you, we've reached hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. The replays sometimes get up to as many as 150,000. And uh, we're hearing from people all over the world who are watching and in many cases discovering how to do art. We have a great gift, uh, gift for you today. Cindy Barron is our guest and she's a world-renowned watercolorist and oil painter. But today she's going to show you how to get the, the richness in your colors with glazes. And of course, this a lot of people would look at this and say, no way, that's a watercolor. I mean, that's how, how you're going to get this kind of rich, rich, amazing color. And so Cindy's going to show you how to do that today. So it's going to be a great opportunity to learn. Today's prize for leaving a comment. If you leave a comment, tell us where you're from. We will pick from the comments and give away my book, Make Your Money Selling Your Make More Money Selling Your Art. This is a book I designed to help artists who really want to learn how to get it going from the very, very beginning and, and how to really kind of figure out how to sell something. We have a free gift for you today. It's a, a 101 watercolor painting tips, tricks, and techniques. And it is yours. Just go to watercolorlive.com slash 101 tips. That's slash 101 tips. The winner of our last giveaway is Andrea Jedden of Houston, Texas. Texas. <laughs> she won the easel brush clip. Uh, I want to tell you guys, you can subscribe to this broadcast so it notifies you when we come. Sometimes I just randomly decide to do them. Uh, you can subscribe at uh, Streamline Art on YouTube or follow me on uh, Instagram and Facebook at Eric Rhodes. Okay, now we're going to get back to our guest, Cindy Barron. Cindy, are you ready to roll? I am. Can you see it fine? I can see it just perfectly. And I just got to tell you something real quickly, and that is... Uh, if you remember, uh, I don't know, it was probably back in the spring, you were in town shooting your new video, uh, which is called Elegant Landscapes. And you came into the studio with me and you showed me some techniques that completely changed how I paint. And I've been following uh, the palette suggestions you made ever since then. And man, it has set my work on fire. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you for that. Well, you know, I took some tips from you too. So, and a, a couple <laughs> colors of, of paint. So you started something also. <laughs> All right, good, good. All right, well, we're going to let you get started here. Well, I'm going to move fairly fast here because we have limited time. But the one thing I want to stress, yes, I am different from other watercolorists. But the one thing I need to stress very much is I put a lot of time in my paintings. None of my paintings are quick. I let all my students know that. So what I'm gonna do here is, is show you how I get that richness in the layers of paint, the glazing. There's several different ways you can say this, but um, I put paint on top of paint after it dries. So I'm gonna get started here because we have a limited time and I wanna make sure I get so much in here. People are going to want to, I'm just going to just, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. But uh, first off, people are asking, are we live today? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Secondly, people are going to want to know what kind of paper you're painting on and what kind okay. of paint you're using. Okay. So th the paint I use is, is Windsor Newton uh, professional grade watercolors. And I, I have put it down to just Windsor red, Windsor yellow. 
I use a black. A lot of artists don't use black. I like to make my greens. I have ultramarine blue. I have cobalt blue. And one color I never leave home without, and that's brown matter. I love this color. It's a great earth color. It's very rich. So these, this is my color palette as you see it right here. The paper I use, which I think is the number one paper, is Arches uh, Cold Press. Now there's hot press, cold press, and rough. I use the cold press, it's a happy medium, and I use the 300 grade. You can use 140 pound, but when you see me paint, you'll understand why I use the 300 pound. It takes a lot of um, abuse, it takes a lot of paint, it takes a lot of paper. So there's an ingredient to doing what I'm doing. I, it's like making a cake. I know how much water to paint and uh, vice versa, paint to water on the paper. And that's something you won't, won't understand until you actually do it. So the, this is what, I, what I'm showing you. It's important that you try it. It might not be for you, but I guarantee you something will click in because I don't mix on my palette. You see all these puddles of paint here and I wanted to make sure you saw my palette in this demo. I don't mix on the palette. I mix on the paper. And that's Ooh. this is going to freak you out a little bit, but I'm already freaking out. <laughs> but I, I think you'll like it. So let me get going. Ask away um, any questions. I don't mind. I tell my students in class, I never like a quiet classroom because then I feel like I'm doing something wrong. So ask away. A All spray right. bottle. I have very many different sizes of these spray bottles. It's just water inside. Well, I Some thought you had vodka in there to make for a happy morning. <laughs> say what i said i thought you had vodka in there to make for a happy morning <laughs> i don't do vodka i would do scotch but not vodka <laughs> um but um I, I get very uh, different sizes of these these i i've got a whole slew of different size ones and each one will do a different technique for me so let me get started here i'm actually going to spray my paper you will see very little of the brush hitting the paper so i'm just going to saturate the paper and you notice I have an arrow here. That's always to remind me where my light source is coming from. Because as an artist, I tend to um, forget. I, I, I get so immersed into my paintings, I tend to forget you know, where I have the light and then something good is happening and I change. So this is very important for me. I thought now I was the, the only one, one that did the arrow. Not wet. I'm gonna just, it's just gonna have sprinkles. But other than that, I am saturating this paper. You can see the water moving the pencil lines. I don't care about the pencil lines. They are, they are gonna diminish after all these glazes. So here's the wild part. You ready? I'm gonna pick up yellow and I'm not touching the paint, the brush to the paper. So I'm remembering my light source. I'm gonna pick up red. Now there's a, a method to the reason why I picked up red. I don't wanna make green, so I wanna make a nice warm tone. So this is just Windsor red and Windsor yellow that I'm using. Now bear with me a little bit. I'm gonna turn the, the paper because I want this to mix. This is how I mix on the paper. I do not mix on my palette because watercolor is special. I like watercolor to blend as nature wants it to blend. So this is why I do this. And I the colors are blending for me more naturally. So bear with me, I, you'll see the rest. I'm gonna throw a little bit more on. And this is pretty, you're gonna go, wow, this is gonna be a bright painting. No, it's gonna dry a whole lot lighter. Now I'm going to go to the cobalt blue. So as, as you see me splattering, you can, uh, you can tell that my studio is probably quite messy, especially when I'm on large paintings. This is a smaller painting. So once again, I'm going to blend these. And I'm going to blend these so I'm going. I'm manipulating it so I know where each color wants to blend into the other. 
Paul has a question. It says, how did you come about this technique? Um, trial and error. Plus, uh, there's a great artist. Um, of course, I took it past what she was doing. Her name was Nita Engel. She passed away several years ago, but she was my light bulb moment. But she wouldn't do as much as of this as I do. I tend, I took it to the next level where everything gets splattered. But if you uh, want to look up one of the most fabulous watercolor painters, Nita Engel. Are you wearing an apron? Or are you wearing white? Looks like you'd get splatters all over you. No, you can ask anybody. I barely get paint on myself, rarely, even in oils. <laughs> now, this is what excites me. This is the important part right here. You can see the different way the color is shifting. I have it more cool on this side and warm on this side where my light's coming from. This I, I, I love. I, I get excited when I see colors mixed this way. Now, if you notice, I go to my palette and I basically just pick up. And I'm going to manipulate this again by turning it. Now, if you go and look at my watercolor paintings and everyone that you will note or you will see, no matter what type of landscape it is, whether it's an oceanscape or a mountain scene or what, um, whatever, I do the same technique because I am one that's afraid of the white paper. And I like to cover it, just like in my oil paintings, I have to get rid of the, the, the cam. I have to cover the canvas immediately. And then I'm not so intimidated. Don't ask me why I feel that way, but um, uh, that's what I do. And then I just wipe my corners down, my edges down. And this basically is it for this stage. I will let this dry, but um, it, um, I, it, at this point, I might say, I want to do the same thing all over again, but I'm pretty happy with what came on here. I love these transitions. I absolutely love that. I think that's the, um, the cool part about watercolors. And it, it's, it's, it's um, this turned out perfect. Now you're going to see, I'm going to remove this and put the next stage on. I stayed up last night getting all this done for you guys. So here it is dry. So the beauty of, um, you know, on those cooking classes where they bake cakes and the next thing you know, comes out of the oven done. So here's that step I just showed you. And so now I'm going to do it again. And this is what I mean about layers of color or glazes of color on top of each other. That's what makes it rich. I'm not going to change the palette too much. It's go I'm going to keep the same colors. I'm going to clean up a little of this, little of this here because I just want to get some fresh color on there, especially the yellow. And once again, I will make my piles of paint. I always like to put out fresh paint when I'm doing the first couple rounds of glazing. I have done this, I, I have one on my um, website of the Grand Canyon, which had a lot of reds in it, which was fabulous. I probably we, put five layers of paint on it. That's how you see that richness. We will put your website in the comments for anybody who's interested. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this, say I didn't like this stage, I would just repeat what I just showed you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate shapes. I'm going to skip to uh, uh, the next step. And I just, you can see my drawing still in here. So I'm just putting down water where I want the paint to go. And you're going to go, how are you going to splatter and not get the other parts of the paper? I'll show you. So now I'm just going to spray the rest to tip it up because you're going to see where the water, I, I only want the paint to go the next step. And this is where I, the richness of the paint will come in. 
going to get that water to move a little bit. Mind you, I'm sitting down right now, but I always stand in my studio. It's just this is better to show you what I'm, I'm doing, confused. if anybody was wondering. I am confused. Are you confused? Yeah, because you 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 put water in with your brush and then you spray it on top of it. With well, the because uh -huh. I didn't want to do all of this. The only you'll see when I throw the paint. So hold on. All right. You'll see where I throw the paint because I only want the paint to go in certain areas. Okay, so let's repeat the process. I have where my light source is coming from. Here's another trick you can do. So you don't get paint in this area because I didn't. There is no water in this area. I crumble up a piece of tissue. And I'll lay it like that. And that will save that area. Now I'm going to throw paint again. I know my, my warmths or my yellows are over here. Sharon in Wyoming asks if you stretch your paper. No, this is 300 pounds. You don't have to stretch it. 140 pound, yes. Now I'm going to manipulate this again. Now you're going to see where the color is going to go. Remember, I didn't saturate the whole paper this time. Only where I want the color to go. This is a, a controlled mess. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Well, you got a worldwide audience today, Cindy. I see Russia, India, oh, Netherlands, Russia. Norway, Mexico. I'll uh, be thank you Russia guys for putting Sunday. in the comments. Hi to Russia. I'll be there on Sunday. You're going to Russia? Yes. My younger son plays in St. Petersburg, so I'm going for three weeks. Oh, my. Uh, you want me to connect you with some artists over there? Oh, that would be great. But I got to babysit also. All right. <laughs> so, it's, you know what? If you do, that would be great. I'll be your um, spokesperson over there. <laughs> I'm taking a group, as you probably remember, I'm taking a group to Russia in September. Oh, this, oh, nice. We're going to paint for two weeks. Okay, so now you can see what's going on. I'm mixing the color. I'm going to lay this flat again. Now, with the brush, I'm going to take some of this color and I'm going to manipulate it into this is going to be background foggy trees because right now until i get to the next step you're probably going what the heck is she painting you'll see it in the next step all right but this is what i always this is how i start each and every one of my paintings um i set the tone for what i it's going to be whether it's a foggy day or a sunshine day i set the tone through this step So I, I I have rarely touched the paint the paper with a brush yet. And you can tell how much paint or water and paint is on here by watching the way it's mixing right now. Yeah. But I'm manipulating where I want most of the color to end up. Fascinating. This is kind of like the watercolor equivalent of palette knife painting, you know, where, you, <laughs> where you get all these random, incredibly exciting marks. Well, that's just it, Eric. In this, I love, I get excited when I can, there's always happy accidents that happen with watercolors, but I get excited when I see things blend. 
Now I'm just going to take a little bit of black because I make my yellows in both my mediums, I mean my greens. You'll see in the next step how this turns out. I'm going to manipulate that green up just a little bit. And what that green is going to do is neutralize all those bright colors in there and bring trees closer to you. How fun. I'm making the tips of some evergreens just by pushing the brush up. Jennifer Edwards is asking what the uh, brush you're using is, the brand. All right. So here's the thing with the brushes. Sorry, they do not make these anymore. But I have picked out a fabulous new brush set um, from Rosemary Brushes that you can get at Wind River Arts. And uh, it is it is what the, it's my replacement for these brushes. These brushes are gone. I haven't received those brushes yet. They should be here within the next couple of days. So, you know, I can do a follow up with you. But um, uh, unfortunately, you can't get these anymore. I'm so sorry. What are they? What are they called? Uh, these right here, they're low Cornell, but uh, they do not make them anymore. Well, I'd lock them up because people f figure out where you live, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, I, when I teach my workshops, I, uh, I uh, search the painters when they leave because I don't want them taking my brushes. I've got some brushes I've mutilated. <laughs> um that one day I'm going to have to replace those two. So this is what's exciting about throwing this paint. I want you guys to see how all of this, that is the excitement of watercolors. This is what gets me every time. I love both my mediums, oils, and watercolors, but I'm telling you, this, you can't do this in oils. That's the beauty of, of a watercolor. Okay, so now you can see, here was that first wash the second wash on top of the first wash. Now I'm going to fast forward a lot and take you to what I'm working on. And now you'll be able to see the difference. So keep this in mind. Okay, Cindy, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go ahead and you can go ahead and show it. Okay. And, because you're going to take it to the next level, but we're going to take a quick, real uh, quick little break here real quickly. Okay. And uh, then we're going to come back and, uh, and show uh, what you're going to do next. Okay. Sound perfect. like a plan? Sounds okay. perfect. All right. Well, I'm having trouble with my mouse, actually. I can't control it. You just go ahead, and I'll see if I can figure it out. You keep painting? Yeah, keep painting, because uh, okay. for whatever reason, I'm having issues. Okay, so now you can see the first wash, the second wash, and the, a third wash. So I went in and did it again, because we have a short period of time. So I fast forwarded this a little bit more. Here's the third wash. So I went on top of what you just saw a third time and blended it, made some hard and soft edges, which is important in any medium and any uh, painting you do. And then I went forward again. So there's one, two, three, four washes on top of each other. That's what I wanted to stress to you on what I do with my watercolor paintings. They're not quick paintings. I invest a whole lot of time, especially into the watercolor, not only the oils, but these, I, I tend to start a bunch of them and I only glaze them once a day because I like things to dry for 24 hours before I go back in and do the same thing because you can tend to move the paint a little bit if it hasn't adhered to the paper yet. And uh, I always make sure my paper is dry by the back of my hand, uh, not this part, the palm, by the back of the part because th this part won't tell you if it's dry. This part will tell you if it's dry. If it's cool to the touch, it's not dry. Step away from the painting and dry it and then come back. So you can see one, two, three, four glazes. So there's four different steps on here, but you can see the beauty of how one color, uh, it's same, same pile of paint, nothing's any different. You can see the beauty of how each one has helped the other one and, and the harmonizing. So I basically harmonize this moody morning type scene with layers of the same paint used at different strengths 
and different um, and when each glazing or layer is dry. So now I'm going to, I never, I use gouache, but I only use the white and I'll tell you why. I, I like to, I like in my paintings, you'll see transparency and you'll see opaque. I like that push pull of transparency to opaque. So I will make my colors just with the white gouache, which is Windsor Newton designer gouache zinc white. And so now I'll use the same paints I've been using, but I'm going to mix a little white into them and I'm going to design, I'm going to design a little bit here. I'm happy with all this turns out. I may go and, you know, bring out another tree behind here. I love making distance. I love making that depth of a force. It's, it's one thing that turns me on. So I'm not done with all this, but we don't have that time to do that. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, Cindy, and we'll, okay. be, right, and we'll be right back. Okay. Join the world for Watercolor Live, the ultimate watercolor learning event, January 26th to 29th. Four days of online art lessons from top master watercolor artists from around the globe. Learn to paint nature, people, cityscapes, flowers, and more. Become a better artist. Click the link to learn more and get our free ebook, 101 Watercolor Secrets from the Top Masters. Join. Uh, we're we're going to just show you real quickly some of the faculty members and uh, walk you through that. But Watercolor Live is coming up in January. It's the world's largest online learning event and the actually the world's largest art uh, gathering uh, that we, we're we aware of anyway. Kathleen Alexander, I'm just going to go through these. I'm not even going to read the names. We'll just flip through them as we go through. Cindy, of course, will be there. A lot of different approaches and techniques and styles. Uh, you're going to learn a lot of different uh, subject matter. The great Alvaro Castanet, of course, uh, Shen Chung Wei, great painters, all of these people who are going to be showing you their techniques over a three-day period. Plus, we have a beginner's day. The beginner's day will be a one full day that you can sign up for optionally if you don't know watercolor or you want to just brush up on it. And some of these people will only be on watercolor basics day. So you want to do that. But this is a world-class faculty and uh, the people who've attended have loved it in the past. This is our second time around and uh, we think it's going to be thousands of people who are going to be on it so we would love for you to join us uh, and the price is going up on the 15th right around the corner so you want to make sure that you get your your ticket and it's 100 percent guaranteed if you watch the first day and feel like you don't get the entire week's value on the first day uh, you can get a refund on your money because we want to make sure that you're happy okay let's get back to uh to cindy Barron. okay cindy thank you for giving us that break. All right, I'm going to let you continue now. Okay, so I took my white gouache and I'm using the colors I had here to make a green. And I do layers of this too. So you're probably going, my gosh, everything's a layer. That's what I was trying to express to you guys, the richness of layers in watercolors or glazes, whichever word you want to use. So now I'm basically dry brushing because I want some of that transparency to come out, but I'm gonna make a foreground grasses in front. And I'll go on top of this with layers. And it's, it, 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 once again, it's time consuming, but I love, it's taken me years to figure this out, but I love doing this. I love detail. I also love in the impressionistic part that comes uh, with doing watercolors this way. So, um, each one is a learning of each painting. I, I learned something from each painting. You can just see, I'm just dragging my brush up, but I have such nice rich color under here and the opaque on top of it is giving it a really nice feel to it. So I'll do this and then I'll go, I'll maybe make this color. I'm gonna add a little black into it, make this color a little deeper, a little bit of ultramarine. And I'm going to go into the trees just to highlight the tree, just certain limbs. That's not dark enough. And the one thing about gouache, and there's a lot of wonderful gouache painters out there now, which I love. And I, I love seeing that. This one's a little bit different only because 
I like the transparency plus the opaque. So it's a fine line between how much opaque uh, or transparency I leave and the opaque. So you accomplished, I just want to make sure I caught that, you accomplish the gouache feel just by using a gouache white mixed with your watercolors. Is that right? Correct. I do not use the color of the colors in gouache. And the reason why is because for me, they become too chalky. And like I said, I like to work with the transparency and the opaque that you see. So it's, it's a little bit, it's different. And there's a fine line, you know, sometimes I have to step away from a painting just to see if it's working. But now look at all these layers and now I'm, I'm doing the highlights and I'm doing the detail. This is where I, I, I can sit for hours and just work on detail. And I take my finger and, and touch the edge of it. And what it happens is it smears it and softens the line. So there's a lot of techniques. Did that? I hope that made sense. Yep. I see. I put it down and then I smear it, and it just softens the line. And I'll go on top with different, you know, a different value on top of that. One thing I learned from you uh, in practicing what you taught me is that. You really don't, uh, when you're making a high value on a tree like that, it's really not very high. It really blends, it still remains pretty dark. I, yes, I love subtle, subtle value changes. And to me, that's key in, in, in all your paintings. And if you see my oils, I subtly work with the values. I think it's so important and, and it's just my technique. Um, even in watercolors, if you see this, you know, normally you go from light to dark. I sort of go right into the medium light into dark, and then I lift colors. And what I'll do also, because I don't know how much time we have left. Well, we got but, a little um, time. How are we doing, Eric? Oh, you got plenty of time. Take what you need. Okay. What I want to do is show you how I'll pick out, because I have this wonderful color in here, these nice darks, but I'm going to pick out a, a trunk just with water on my brush and i'm just going to lay down a bead of of water it's basically water this is dirty water now love that dirty water <laughs> and then i dab it and i'm going to pick out the trunk of a tree i don't know if i put a tree one in in um uh the reference thing but you'll get on there and you'll see some of the trees I've, I've done and i basically have lifted out those branches so another reason how i learned all this um is i keep my duds and as artists we all have duds so i experiment and and we all get bogged down with like oh i don't know what to paint today or whatever that's when I go to my dud piles and I experiment. And so that is the biggest info and gift I can give to you is duds are a blessing. And it, it's actually the ones that make you grow. It's not your successful paintings. It's the, the duds because there you learn what you did wrong, how you can fix it, just play with it. And you'll be surprised at how you can turn some of those duds into sweet little gems. So, you know, don't get upset if you have duds, we all have them, but um, play with them. This is so inspiring. And I'm a drawer, you know, painting came hard, color theory came hard. So that's, you know, I've shared with you my color theory part because all of that was very hard for me. I, it, um, I had to learn that part, but I could always draw. As a, as a young kid, I, I did portraits, and um, that was um, my strength, was in drawing. So now I'm drawing with my brush. I've got all this wonderful color and stuff on here. Now I'm drawing with my brush, and that's the, um, this is where I feel most comfortable.
you guys are digging this, and I am, make sure that you pass it along, share it with other people so they can see it. Uh, this is changing the way I was thinking about watercolor for sure. It's different. I'm and, different. And, and that's the value. You when, when you attend something like Watercolor Live, you're going to see 30 different approaches to painting, and everybody's a little different. And that's a lot important, of ideas. Eric, you just saying that because you learn, you're going to take something from everybody. You know, not just me. You might take one thing from me, one thing from somebody else, something from someone else. That's the beauty of these classes. And that's the beauty of being able to go back and look at this. You're going to take something from, from everybody. Uh, that's what we're here for. You know, that's our gift, if, especially if you're teachers. You, um, your gift is to make you leave happy and inspired and wanting to try it. So you see, I'm going over and over with this and some of it's disappearing and some of it's, you know, even the opaque paint that I'm putting on here can become transparent. And that's when I go on top and make limbs on top of limbs on top of limbs. It's, it's, it might not be for everybody, but this is my comfort zone when I get to draw with the paintbrush. I, I got all this beautiful color down here. Now I'm going to work with, with what I made of it. Um, you can see I, I tore off the outer edge of the masking tape because I wanted you to be able to see what it, um, how it looked. But I will, you know, manipulate even this color a little bit more. There are times where I'll turn this painting upside down and just spritz water on top of this and it will take off just enough paint that will this sky will like haze through here so th these are things i like to do i you know i my head's i'm sort of like a carpenter i don't like electronics that's where i get messed up but um i can build you a garage so this is right up my alley <laughs> on on how to create a painting and i i look into all of those and like i said pull out your duds your duds are a gift that's where I learn. You know, I kind of need a new garage. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's bad. Actually, can, you've you've been in my build. studio and I'm working with an architect to see if I can, I can make it bigger. Oh, really? Well, I just sold my home and that's what I'm doing. I'm building, I'm building my next place. I'm grateful right. that my son had a rental unit available. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah, you know it is. I good, I I good get time it. to I've sell a house. A Pardon me. Good time to sell a house. Oh my gosh! I sold it in 24 hours with nine offers. Wow! So you didn't ask, um, you didn't ask enough. <laughs> uh, well, it went up. It, 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 uh, there was a nice little bidding war going on. We so, but that. um, I um. I, I did it. I jumped and I went, you know, I want that studio. I'm going for it. So I did it. Good for you. So you're going to stay in the same area? Uh, somewhere. As long as I can get the land, I've got to find the right piece of land. If I found an old fixer upper, as long as I could, I want a barn. Yeah. So um, not too many barns in Rhode Island, but um I, you know, I, I don't mind building one if I can have the right, you know, find the right land. So you see what I'm doing? I'm going darker here. So I'm creating more depth into this painting. I'm bringing a tree in front of the other tree. Now, do you ever go back in and change anything in the in the layers behind this this layer where you put detail? I yes, I sometimes do. Um, we have someone tuning in from China. Oh, All right. nice! But now, can you see this? Look at these layers. Now, this is the exciting part, and how each layer is interesting with all the color, all the different. The way I manip you saw the way I man manipulated the colors by turning the paper the paper. But this is what's exciting. I'm building depth. I love that. That's that's um the key to all my paintings. I want to be able to have the artist walk through a painting. So that that's the key. And I'll go on top. And I'm just everything I'm doing right now is basically dry brushing. 
Well, hello to China that just tuned in. That's really fun when we see people from where, you know, when they say in the comments where they're from. And of course, they can win today. They can win my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. And uh, we're going to grab somebody out of the comments today. Hey, I, I took your book when I was down there the last time. It's a great read. You're so. the one who took it. <laughs> Do what? I said, you're the one who took it. Oh, I'm sorry. It was oh. there for the taking. I'm sorry. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well, you got to stay in the world famous artist cabin. And... I did. Um, but I started reading it there and then I had to go home and I went, well, guess what? It's got to come with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have plenty of them. I don't know. So how it is a good read. I don't know and, how many. Uh, you know what? It's made... good for all artists out there to read no matter what level you're at. We made Amazon bestseller in two categories. That was pretty exciting. Hello, Scotland. Oh, North hey. Scotland. That's on my bucket list. I'll be there yeah. one day. All right. I uh, rented a castle with a bunch of artists, and we spent a, a week in Scotland together. It was a lot of fun. Well, that's part of my heritage. Well, there you go. You need to get there. Yes. It's a tough decision. Scotland or studio? Scotland or studio? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I, you know, it's, it's, it is, but you know what? Um, I'm not going to wait. I'm just, I'm going for it all. I think it's a good thing. Hello, India. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Now everybody's starting to, hello, hello, England. See, you mentioned them. Here's another one in China. Now people are starting to come out of the woodwork. I like that. Thank you. Saskatchewan. Netherlands. Well, that's, um. I'm from the Western European. I'm from England, Ireland, Scotland, Greenland. That's my genetic makeup. All right. Texas, that's kind of like a foreign country. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Texas. Calgary. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. So this has been very enjoyable. Well, like I, I tell all my students when I teach and they see it, is um, I put a lot, of, I invest the time into the paintings. Nothing leaves my studio unless it's, it's ready. That's so hard sometimes, isn't it? it? You know, it is. And sometimes there's a lot of all-nighters, especially, you know, if you've got a deadline. Um, I've done quite a few all-nighters because I'm leaving for um, Russia, and I figured I can sleep on my way over. Yeah. Um, but um, had to get some stuff done. And I want to pay for that new studio. Absolutely. Well, everybody here can, uh, Cindy, if they want to buy your paintings, where do they go? Um, they can uh, message me, um, go to my website, and there's a message. You can leave a message. Um, so um, I don't know how much time we have left because now it's all about designing. I can show you a couple little ones that I've been working on. Do you mind if I show it and that will show the um Yeah. Okay. Players? So I'm I'm going to give you five more minutes. So perfect. Okay. So this is one. This is just a small um oh I think it's six by six, something like that. Um and this is once again all about the layers. And I'm not done with it because I want to see how many layers I can create. So this is why I play with this one a lot. And um, so, you know, if you want to do watercolor live coming up in January, you're going to see this, uh, this particular one. Then it's the same scene. I'm just coming a little closer and playing more with the layers. And it's a wonderful uh, Merced River outside Yosemite. So this is the same thing I have shown you. And it's the same layers. And once again, I'm going to build the whole forest back there just with subtle, subtle, subtle value changes. All right. So, well, why don't you come back on camera so that we can see your smiling face? Oh, do you want me to turn? Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn it around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Okay. Uh, 
Thumbs up and applause, everybody. All right. Am I so here? I'll come back on camera with you. Good. Well, Cindy, you did a terrific job. I want to Thank show so everybody much. this. Let's see if I can show it. The light. There we go. So this is an oil painting that Cindy did. And, that's the Merced uh, River. That's the Merced River as well. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And and I, uh, you, I have carried this with me. Uh, I carried it with me to the Adirondacks. Uh, I also, you did a little color chart for me. I car carried that with me. I want to show your video real quickly because you did a video on your oil. What is very rare that somebody can be an accomplished master both in oil and in watercolor, but you've done that. Uh, well, let's go ahead and show that that cover of your, your oil uh, video. Now, this is called Elegant Landscapes, and it walks through all of your principles of oil painting. Uh, and, and what I found really especially helpful is that you completely changed how I think about color. And uh, so it's absolutely a fabulous video, which is available at streamline.art. Um, but uh, congratulations on mastering both mediums. It's really oh, hard to thank do. Thank you. I, um, I love art. <laughs> Obviously. Well, thank you, Cindy. And we'll see you on Watercolor Live in January. And uh, thanks for doing that. And I'll I'll ping you and I'll, I'll give you some introductions in St. Petersburg. If you have some oh, time definitely. between grandkids, I'll, I'll get you a couple studio visits or something. And oh, it's a I would love it. it. Oh my God, definitely. We're going to do Moscow and St. Petersburg. So oh, I okay. It. Thank you. Great. Well, I have lots of friends in Moscow as well. <laughs> and then I will uh, also, you need to go see the Repin studio. If you've not seen it, it's just outside of St. Petersburg. It's a must see. It's one of the places we're taking our group next September. We're going to paint all over so you can get some practice and, and check I will out. I'm only taking the watercolors because I don't know if I can get the oil stuff over there. So I'm only taking Oh, yeah. The well, you can get oils. As a matter of fact, they have a, a brand that's made in St. Petersburg that is to die for. Oh, it's, really? It's, it's a wonderful brand. I have a lot of it. I buy it every time I'm over there. So there's uh, about five or six good art stores in St. Petersburg. So you're going to nice. Have, yeah. You just have to have somebody who can speak the language to, because some things you won't know what they are, but you take, take some of that gambling medium, which you can take on an airplane. Uh, that way you won't find that over there probably. And uh, some, you, know, you can find something over there to clean your brushes. You'll be cool. You can oh, even buy a Russian easel, a Yarka easel, a, <laughs> hey, who knows what I'll come back with? I'm going That's with right. a suitcase full of food right now. But uh, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Cindy, and uh, have a safe trip. And thanks again for doing this. We'll see you on Watercolor Live. Well, thanks what so a much, great Eric. Day. I appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Cindy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So our guest today has been Cindy Barron. And uh, you can find Cindy's website information in the comments and also, uh, we'll put in the comments that you can buy her oil painting video at streamline.art. And uh, what a, a terrific video that is. Uh, we have a lot going on between now and Christmas. So I'm, I'm going to do this live a couple of more times, and then I'm going to take some time off. But we will have the replays on. Uh, I was out yesterday painting Christmas scenes. I'll post some stuff on my Instagram about that. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Eric Rhodes and follow this at YouTube. Uh, just go to Streamline Art Video on YouTube and you can find us there. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today and uh, keep your head in the game, stay positive. You know, the world is a lot different than it was a year ago, two years ago. So we just got to stay focused. And the more people that we can get painting, the better we're going to change the world because, you know, once you get art in your heart, right, everything changes certainly happened for me. And I think it happens for you too. A lot of new people painting. Uh, make sure you put something in the comments. You can win my book today, uh, either live or in the replays. And uh, we also have a lot of other things coming up that, that you'll love to hear about. So thank you again for tuning in. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.